Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Scotch Eggs. That's right, I have nothing against marshmallow or chocolate, but when it comes to Easter eggs, I prefer mine a little more on the savory side. And since that holiday is right around the corner, I thought I would show you my take on this incredibly delicious treat. And speaking of Easter, if you think rising from a grave is impressive, wait until you taste these. So let's go ahead and get started. And for step one, we're going to have to boil some eggs. And by boil, I mean steam. So what we want to do is place a saucepan with some kind of tight-fitting lid over high heat and bring just about a half inch of water to a boil. And once that happens, we're going to carefully, very carefully, place our eggs into the pan. And the reason you want to place them in carefully is because if you make a little hairline crack placing them in, they might burst open while they steam. So be careful. And once we have our eggs safely in the pan, we will quickly place on the lid, turn our heat down to medium high, and set our timer for exactly, exactly six minutes. And that's gonna produce what we hope is a perfectly soft boiled egg. So unlike more traditional versions, I'm not gonna hard boil the egg. Personally, I think this is far superior if the yolk is a little bit runny. And runny's not a good term, it's gonna be molten. And as soon as that timer rings six minutes, we're gonna quickly move that to the sink, and hit those eggs with nice cold water to stop the cooking process. So this initial blast of water kind of stops them from cooking any further. And then we'll add some more and let them sit in that cold water until they've cooled down. And like I said, if you want to cook these hard boiled, there's no shame in your game. That is the classic method. This is an old picnic food after all. But like I said, I do prefer if the yolk is still flowing a little bit when we cut into these. But regardless of how far you cook your eggs, once those have cooled down, we will peel them. And one nice thing about this steaming method other than you can get pretty precise levels of doneness, the eggs tend to peel very easily. So we'll peel our eggs, and then one minor but important step before we move on, make sure you dry your eggs off on a towel. All right, wet eggs are slippery eggs, which could cause a problem when we try to wrap these with our sausage mixture. All right, so we'll peel and dry off our eggs, and we'll set those aside while we move on to mix up the aforementioned sausage mixture. And the base for mine is gonna be some sweet Italian sausage that I'm gonna remove from the casing, and please note, any ground raw sausage mixture is gonna work here. So this is just what I'm gonna use, because I like all the herbs and spices in the Italian sausage blend, the fennel, the garlic, the pepper, etc. But of course, we're gonna doctor it up a little bit. So I'm gonna give mine a nice healthy shake of cayenne, and I assume many of you true believers will do the same. And then I'm gonna give it a nice big pinch of freshly grated nutmeg. That's gonna give this a very, very subtle, kind of breakfasty sausage aspect. And then last but not least, as far as the spices go, We'll do a pinch of dry mustard, and once that's in, we'll take a wooden spoon and give this a good mix. And you may have heard me say this before, don't just space out or daydream. Think of things you may have forgotten or things you may want to add. And it was right about here when I realized I have some chives to use up, which would be perfect in this. So I stopped, tossed them in, and kept mixing. And had I just been staring out the window at that cloud shaped like a boot, I probably wouldn't have thought to add it. But anyway, we'll give that a good mix. And by the way, I'm just doing four eggs here. This is actually enough stuffing for six, but don't worry, as usual on the blog, I will have all the exact measurements. So we'll mix that up, and once that's set, we can move on to putting these things together. So what we wanna do at this point is take a perfect amount of sausage mixture and place it down on top of a piece of plastic wrap. And as you can see, it's kind of in a noble shape. And then we'll fold over the plastic and kind of press that down with our fingers. I don't know, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch thick. And once that's been accomplished, we will place one egg in the center. And you didn't forget to peel it, did you? That will cause problems. So we'll place one egg down on our sausage, and then we will carefully gather that up in our palm and kind of scrunch it together like this until we're able to pull off the plastic. And then very critical, make sure you have a bowl of cold water next to you because really the only way this is gonna work is if your fingertips are damp. So you see me dipping the fingers from both hands into cold water, and that's gonna allow us to slowly but surely work that sausage meat around the egg until it's sealed. And it's not easy to see, but it will be easy to feel. Where there's extra sausage meat, you kind of push that towards the opening. And eventually, by pushing, smushing, and smearing, your egg should be completely encased in a fairly even layer of sausage. And again, the wet fingers are key. So just like you've heard me say when we make meatballs, wet hands make smooth balls. And it's really the same thing here. So I went ahead and encased my four eggs in sausage, at which point they're ready to bread. And for that, we will use the classic three-station breading system. And you've seen us do this before. First, we're going to coat whatever we're breading in flour, and we'll shake off any excess. And by the way, this is your chance. If your scotch eggs aren't shaped like an egg, you can kind of give them a little shaping here. And then once that's been coated in flour, it gets dipped into beaten egg, 
And of course, we're going to make sure it's perfectly covered before its last stop, a bowl of panko breadcrumbs or any breadcrumbs. So any dry crumb will work. And once these are coated with panko, the breading step is pretty much done. And you'll notice I'm using the classic dry hand, wet hand method, which means only one of your hands touches the egg. The other hand only touches flour and breadcrumb. That just makes everything way easier and much less messy. And then once all our eggs are breaded, we have a decision. We can fry right away, or these can be refrigerated until ready to fry. And yes, you can definitely make these the day ahead. But anyway, let me go ahead and cook one right now. Otherwise, the end of this video is gonna be very disappointing. And to do that, we're gonna carefully lower our scotch egg into 350 degree oil and deep fry it for five to six minutes. And one more thing we'll discuss on the post is how to determine how long you should cook yours. It's gonna depend on how cold these are when you decide to cook them, but also how runny you want your egg. But anyway, I fried mine for about five and a half minutes, at which point we'll pull it out and we'll transfer that onto a rack where we really, really wanna let it sit at least five minutes before serving, which is not gonna be easy because that looks incredibly enticing and almost worth risking third degree roof of the mouth burns. But please resist, let it sit at least five minutes That'll give you the perfect amount of time to make a little dipping sauce if you want. So I let mine sit for about five minutes before placing it on a nest of arugula. And I serve mine next to a little mustard aioli, which I really should give you the recipe for some time. Actually, you know what? I'll give it to you now. It's half mayo, half Dijon with a shake of cayenne. And that scotch egg, or at least my take on it, is done. Which brings us to my favorite part, the cutting open of the egg. And fair warning, there's no way you can unsee this. So let's cut in. And I was trying so hard to cut it perfectly that I didn't cut it perfectly. But it didn't matter because it looked like this. How gorgeous is that? And like I said, while you can hard boil these, for me, the key is to keep that yolk a little bit soft. Like I said, runny's not the right term. It's more of a molten yolk. And then because the inside of eggs don't come seasoned, I am going to give that a little bit of salt and freshly ground black pepper. And that, my friends, in addition to being absolutely gorgeous, is one of the best things you'll ever eat in your life. And by the way, fun fact... They say this was not invented in Scotland, but it actually comes from a North Indian recipe that translates to narcissist meatballs. And when I heard that, I was like, what does this have to do with me? But anyway, just a little historical tidbit. And while these are absolutely fine plain, I do think a little sauce is a nice touch. And because of our molten yolk, it's almost like you get two sauces. This is just a stunningly delicious thing to eat. So everybody knows what a great job Scotland does with the whiskey and the tape. But I think this scotch egg deserves just as much love. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.